Former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou has officially signed on to box former world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua next month. This is a huge fight that combat sports fans have been wanting to see for a long time. Ngannou has made a crazy successful transition to pro boxing already, going the distance with Tyson Fury himself in his debut match last October. Now he gets another shot against an elite level guy in Joshua. While this Joshua fight is clearly Nyanu's main focus right now, he's made it known that he still has plans to box Deontay Wilder at some point as well. Wilder is coming off a rough loss to Joseph Parker, but Nanu isn't counting him out as a future opponent just yet. Today, we'll break down this upcoming Joshua versus Nganu fight. Predictions from UFC star Tom Aspinall, as well as Nganu's continued interest in a Wilder clash down the line. Let's get into it. Even though Deontay Wilder is coming off a stoppage loss to Joseph Parker last month, Francis Ngannou says he still wants to fight the bronze bomber at some point. Ngannou told Sky Sports, quote, Wilder better get it together because I'm not done. I want that name on my record. He went on to acknowledge that the landscape can change quickly in combat sports, though. Just two months ago, there was talk of Nganu boxing Wilder in the PFL. So while Wilder did not look good against Parker, Nganu knows he's always one punch away from changing a fight. Nganu said everything is possible regarding a future Wilder clash. For now, Nganu is focused strictly on boxing the top guys in the heavyweight division like Joshua and Fury. But he made it clear that he still has unfinished business with Wilder and that he intends to settle in the ring someday. UFC interim heavyweight champ Tom Aspinall recently weighed in with his prediction for the upcoming Joshua vs. Nganu boxing match. Here's what he said. If you asked me this question one year ago, I would have said Joshua would have smoked Nganu easily. He went on to praise Nganu's performance against Fury, though, saying the fight could have gone either way. Aspinall now considers Joshua vs. Nganu a 50-50 fight after Nganu showed his boxing skills. Aspinall finished by saying, who knows what happens in this matchup between two powerful heavyweights. He clearly has a lot of respect for what Nganu has accomplished in his short pro boxing career so far. This is very high praise coming from one of the top UFC heavyweights himself. Aspinall sees Nganu as a legitimate threat in boxing now, not just a crossover sideshow act. Johnny Nelson, a British boxing analyst for Sky Sports Boxing, also considers Anthony Joshua a slight favorite in this bout, but he isn't happy with the fact that this fight is really happening. He believes that Francis Nyanu should have gone for a different opponent. He also went on to say that if Anthony Joshua manages to outlast Nyanu and wins the fight, it'll just be an addition to his massive list of impressive wins against world-class opponents. However, if he loses to the former UFC champion, it can potentially end his career. And we all believe that Anthony Joshua has many more amazing fights to offer, don't we? Here's what Johnny Nelson had to say while discussing and analyzing this highly anticipated fight. Another sports celebrity who gave his prediction for the fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou is ex-Manchester United defender and current football pundit Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand is friends with Anthony Joshua and actually trained with him for a short time a few years back. So it's no surprise that Ferdinand is picking Joshua to beat Francis Ngannou. When asked for a prediction on the fight, Ferdinand plainly stated, I don't think boxing allows Ngannou to win that fight. He seems to believe there will be an inherent bias against Ngannou coming from MMA, trying to beat an established boxing star like Joshua. This is likely in reference to Ngannou's controversial loss to Fury by split decision. Many fans and pundits thought Ngannou deserved the nod in that one, arguing he faced unfair bias as a newcomer to boxing. Ferdinand has been around boxing a lot lately with his soccer star pal Cristiano Ronaldo. He even said Ngannou impressed him in defeat against Fury and could become a major force in the heavyweight division. But when it comes down to it, Ferdinand is rolling with his British buddy Joshua to get the job done over the MMA transplant Ngannou. After beating some of the best heavyweights in MMA history, Francis Ngannou insists he is fully focused on boxing now as his next great challenge. He told media members quite clearly, quote, it's a boxing career. It's not an MMA career now. Nyanu went on to say he reached the pinnacle of MMA by becoming UFC champ and defending his title. He feels he accomplished everything he could hope for in MMA. Now, boxing provides Nganu an opportunity to conquer a whole new combat sports realm. 
He called it something exciting that he just didn't have left to motivate him in MMA anymore. Keep in mind that Nganu is already 37 years old. So while in his physical prime, he knows his window to take over boxing won't be open forever. That's why knocking off names like Fury, Wilder, and Joshua is so important to him right now. He wants to make the most of what years he has left. This tells me Ninganu is dead serious about racking up big boxing matches for as long as he can, rather than quick cash grabs before riding off into the sunset. Strap in, folks, because it seems the Francis Ngannou boxing circus is only just getting started. Now, despite several sports personalities choosing Anthony Joshua as the clear winner, we all know what Ngannou is capable of. Let's look back at his debut against none other than the Gypsy King Tyson Fury. So Fury's promoter Eddie Hearn recently said he isn't totally convinced Fury hasn't declined from his best days in the ring. This is due to Fury's underwhelming performance against Francis Ngannou and the general wear and tear on his body. Hearn isn't writing Fury off by any means, but he does see reason to question whether Fury is still the same dominant force that ran through the division the past few years. In an interview with The Mirror this week, promoter Eddie Hearn gave his honest thoughts on where Tyson Fury currently stands in his career. Hearn said, quote, maybe Fury is a shot fighter. We'll find out on February 17th. He continued, it's very difficult to imagine going into a fight having no idea what the other guy is going to do. This tells me Hearn is genuinely unsure if Fury's last few fights indicate a decline or if he still has enough left in the tank at 34 years old to beat a prime Usyk. After all, Fury did struggle more than expected to get by Francis Ngannou last October. He also endured hell against Deontay Wilder in their epic 2021 trilogy bout before that. So while Fury prevailed in those fights, they took a clear physical toll that has Hearn questioning whether Fury's best days are behind him or if he can summon that dominant form one more time. Very fair questions in my opinion. And if Fury has lost even half a step at this point, it could be enough for Usyk's slick boxing style to finally dethrone him. A big reason for Eddie Hearn's uncertainty stems from how Francis Ngannou performed against Tyson Fury for being a boxing newbie. As Hearn put it, he dropped Fury and that gave him credibility. What we don't know is was it a one-off? Very true. Nyanu wasn't some random bum off the street. He was one of the most feared KO artists in MMA history crossing over to boxing. And while Naganu lost to Fury by split decision, it was a very disputed outcome. Most fans and media actually scored it for Naganu, who scored a flash knockdown and seemed to force the action more. Regardless of whether you agreed with the decision or not, no one expected Nganu to give Fury that many problems. The fact he did plant seeds of doubt on where exactly Fury is right now. Again, not to say Fury can't beat Usyk, but if Nganu in his debut fight could rock Fury and go the distance in a toss-up, it makes you wonder if Fury's physical prime has passed. Since Francis Nganu came so close to defeating Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua's trainer Ben Davison will study that fight closely for clues on how to beat Ninganu when AJ faces him next. As promoter Hearn put it, Davison now has 10 full rounds of Ninganu boxing footage against elite competition to analyze and build a game plan around. While Ninganu lost to Fury, he still showed off incredible raw power that badly hurt Fury multiple times. Davison will scheme to defuse that power by exploiting any flaws he picked up from the Fury fight. Seeing firsthand how Naganu's aggressive pressure style gave Fury issues could provide a blueprint for Joshua to follow as well. If Naganu forced Fury out of his comfort zone, Joshua has the tools to do the same especially if he mimics certain tactics Fury struggled with. Lots of fascinating insight to be gleaned from Nganu versus Fury that Davison can twist to better prepare AJ after seeing Nganu finally in high-level boxing action. Eddie Hearn admits the Fury fight gave Francis Nganu instant credibility as a scary force for Anthony Joshua to combat. As Hearn explained, it's very difficult to imagine going into a fight having no idea what the other guy is going to do. You've got to figure it out from the first bell. Very true. At least now, Joshua and his team have 10 rounds of film to make reads off of, rather than attempting to solve the puzzle completely cold. 
But there is still major uncertainty around what Nganu may have added or improved upon since battling Fury with a few more months of boxing training under his belt. Can Nganu's power carry up fighting heavier guys like Fury and Joshua? Does he have the stamina to sustain a fence for 12 rounds? How will he handle body shots and combinations? Lots of questions linger despite getting a glimpse of Nganu boxing against Fury. It will be trial by fire from round one for Joshua to gauge Nganu's abilities in real time. That unpredictability and feeling out the process required early on makes this matchup incredibly intriguing, though. Joshua can't just rely on typical boxing assumptions against a freak athlete like Francis Nganu. With the fight now just over a month away on March 8th, most sports books have installed Francis Nganu as a moderate underdog against Anthony Joshua. Considering the fact that Nganu comes from an MMA background and did not win against Fury in his first fight, they believe Anthony Joshua has a higher chances of winning this fight. However, considering Nanu almost took out Tyson Fury in his first ever pro boxing match, being only a small underdog here tells you a lot. This is seen as more of a pick'em type fight by odds makers, and Nanu clearly gained a lot of respect after he did far better versus Fury than anyone anticipated. Meanwhile, Joshua is still viewed as a top three heavyweight in his prime at 33 years old. His highlight reel KO power combined with technical skills makes him a force to be reckoned with. So even as the underdog, Yanu has a very realistic shot at springing the upset against AJ. Don't sleep on the Cameroon native shocking the world once again. If Francis Nganu wants to beat Anthony Joshua, his best path to victory involves using his powerful straight shots down the middle to unsettle Joshua. What we saw from Joshua's losses to Oleksandr Usyk was that lateral movement and angles really frustrate him. Nganu doesn't have that same mobility and footwork finesse. However, what Nganu does have is insane punching power combined with an iron chin. He displayed great poise against Fury as well, not letting the big stage affect him. That means Nganu needs to stay composed, cut off the ring, and blast Joshua with heavy shots consistently. Body work will also be key to slowing down and wear on AJ. We know Joshua doesn't like taking punishment. If Nanu can back him up early and get him on the defensive, that could spell trouble for AJ based on the Usyk blueprint. Yes, and Ganu will eat some shots in return, but we've seen him eat absolute bombs in the UFC without going down. The man can take damage and keep coming forward with scary power. That type of unrelenting pressure could definitely overwhelm Joshua over 12 rounds. Nyanu has all the tools to win this fight. He just needs to execute the right game plan to utilize his strengths against Joshua's weaknesses. If he does that, don't be surprised if this former UFC champion's takeover of boxing continues. For Anthony Joshua to have his hand raised against Francis Nganu, he'll want to fight smart and resist getting drawn into a trading slugfest right away. Despite his own nasty KO power, Joshua cannot afford to just let it fly recklessly with Nanu. That only opens himself up to counters that could change the fight. Instead, Joshua should work behind his jab, move laterally to give angles, and selectively attack when openings arise. He can't head hunt or solely focus on Nunganu's body either. Mixing up combinations to Nunganu's head and body will be important to keep him guessing on defense and dull some of that explosive punching power. The version of Joshua that dismantled Kubrat Pulev with precision punching is what needs to show up for this fight. Remain composed, use footwork and angles, and surgically break Nyanu down over time. Another key for Anthony Joshua is attempting to take Francis Nganu down to the canvas. Nganu has scary knockout power, but grappling is seen as a hole in his skill set. Yes, Joshua is primarily a boxer, but we have seen him utilize offensive wrestling before, albeit sparingly. Against a guy making his boxing debut not long ago, takedown attempts could be an X factor. Even just catching Nyanu off guard by shooting in could disrupt his rhythm and get him out of his comfort zone. At the very least, takedown tries would force Nganu to rethink just charging forward recklessly with strikes. Joshua doesn't need to hold Nanu down for long either, but even brief takedowns could sway rounds in close scoring, while also tiring out Nanu. At the end of the day, Anthony Joshua needs to avoid macho ego brawling and lean on his boxing technique and ring IQ advantages. Out faint Nganu, make reads to counter effectively and mix in takedowns when viable. Stick to an intelligent, well-thought-out game plan, and Joshua has a great chance at emerging victorious in this legacy fight for both men. That's all we have for today, folks. Make sure to like this video, 
And if you're excited about the Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou fight and want more exciting news and analysis, please subscribe to our channel. While you're at it, press the bell icon to get notifications as soon as we post a video or an update. That's all from your host. See you soon.